Welcome, in this lecture we are going to talk about implementation of digital pulse keeping modulation using Verilog HDL coding programming and also we are going to show some experimental case studies. So in this lecture we will talk about Verilog HDL implementation of digital pulse keeping modulation and experimental result of a DCM buck converter under digital pulse keeping modulation. So, if we recollect our digital pulse keeping modulation, we are talking about a very basic digital pulse keeping and we have discussed in the previous lecture of this operation and we want to design this block inside the FPGA. That means, this will be our FP, we have to design FPGA base implementation. So, I would say we want to design this block, this block we want to design using Verilog HDL we want to write Verilog HDL and we want to prototype using FPGA. So, we have started the discussion of various module. So, we will consider one main module and two other modules. So, let us go back to the Verilog. So, this is our module. The module name is digital PSM then bracket all the input output port and this will be interface with our real world that means you see a file with the actual device pin. So, you need a high frequency clock then the ADC clock, PWM high signal, PWM low signal, ADC data that will be used and we are also giving some transient to load Q load and then the type of transient. So, here we are talking about we are not considering any transient case study yet because when you go to multi mode only this makes sense because if you go to high load and operate in pulse keeping this is not desirable because there will be no pulse keeping ok. Because I will show you even if you decrease the input voltage if you fix the duty ratio at certain voltage there will be no pulse keeping operation and as a result there will be no output voltage regulation also. So, here we have to declare the port input output port. So, that clock QLR this is the input. ADC clock, PWM high, PWM low, Q load are the output and this is a sign data coming from the ADC and this is in the Q1.9 format in 2S complement. Then this part we have already discussed that we are talking about output then control signal ok and then error. So, here we are defining parameter we can make a reference transient that provision is kept but in this lecture I am not going to show the result. So, this thing we have discussed in our both digital voltage mode and current mode control that means we will consider one reference nominal value another delta reference so that we, we can add them up to make a reference transient. The duty camera command we are taking here it is Q2.8. So, these all signals are Q1.9 and it is Q2.8 that means if you consider duty ratio that means we are talking about because this will be con con compared because we will be comparing this thing with a short wood ok. Now, how do you generate duty ratio? So, duty ratio is here which we will call duty comment and we are talking about this counter which is for RAM, this we are talking about Q uh, 2.9 because you need a 9 bit resolution and the counter that means this RAM voltage we can say VM or whatever it should be positive and we are talking about the RAM voltage varying between 0 to 2 volt that is why counter can take the value from. So, the for this counter the first bit will be 0 then next bit will be 0, 0, 0, 0. So, it will vary from this to maybe 1 close to 0, 1 so that whatever corresponds to 2 volt that we consider. 
and in this q format 2.9 we are considering 2.8 because we can drop so the counter also 2.8 not 2.9 i am sorry because it require a resolution of 9 bit so it will take 8 bit in the decimal and 1 bit in the integer so this is a counter in this context the counter can be almost all ones to get 2 volt then what will be the corresponding value so if you consider like if you take all one so that means all one to be 2 volt then this duty command will give rise to 0 0.25 that means we are talking about 0 0.25 by 2 and the duty ratio will be uh, you know that means it will be how much 0 0.125 that is the duty ratio that we are considering ok. So, that means it is a lower duty ratio only and reference. So, here we are actually capturing the signal sorry this point this particular part is used as if we are getting a stream of data from ADC and that is our ADC data and we are using a register and register has a clock of FSW. So, at this value we are getting the which is called n out ok. So, register is capturing data at the edge of this clock and this is the what and then we have taken the error voltage. So, here error voltage like in actual voltage we write v ref minus v out here v out means it also data means it we are also considering you know uh, the step down and other feedback gain everything. So, reference has to be scale accordingly if you directly take output voltage you have to take the reference voltage if you scale down by a feedback factor this has to be also scaled down. Here we are intentionally discarding the LSB so that we get a, a lower resolution of the ADC so that we will not encounter any uh, you know limit cycle oscillation issue. And as usual we have discussed that this reference is taking from either nominal or this nominal plus delta v ref, but we are considering here n rep to be equal to n rep nominal. So, we are not making at this point of time any reference changes. So, now we are talking about n e which is n ref that means n ref minus n out. So, just to avoid any confusion you can remove this particular term. Now, you know if n e is negative what does it mean that means output is higher than reference and this n e is a sign number it is in q 1.9. So, n e is negative it implies that sign bit because the 9 bit will be equal to 1 because it is a 2s complement any negative quantity will have a leading bit 1 and if any is greater than 0 then the sign bit number will be 0 and this is very important because this will decide our pulse keeping operation. So, this clock generator we are instantiating one clock generator and one PSM logic. So, this is the overall. So, this register we have discussed, we are taking data from ADC, we are discarding one bit here and then we are generating the error voltage and this is going inside the PSM logic block. So, which is here PSM logic block and PSM logic block is generating QH and QL and we should remember that we are giving a duty ratio command to achieve a duty ratio of 0.125 that we have discussed. So, we are not going to discuss now creating transient. So, this part we can drop because we are we may or may not want any transient. So, you can see that n rep we are directly we can consider reference command as well, but for this particular case study we are directly we are not making any reference transient that means we are not doing any transient you can see the q transient is 0 that means there is no reference transient. So, q transient is 0 sorry. 
So, here we are setting the load transient to be 0 and the option that we are giving Q tran type that means, if you go to the Q tran type we are giving assign external load and here externally there is a switch when I go to the demonstration. So, that switch will place in a position that means, it will not make any transient. So, if you take this guy to be 0 then what will happen? If this is 0 then it will take nominal uh, sorry it is 0 means it will take the right side of this value. So, that means, we are considering n ref to be n ref nominal we are not making any transient, but if you set that this to be 1 then it will take the reference transient. So, when we will show the live demo we will show this case. So, now the module flux clock generation we have discussed for both current mode and voltage mode control. So, this part I am not going to discuss we have discussed sufficient in sufficient detail these are the plug but we want to consider the module for PSM logic which is simple. So, the PSM logic we need to provide the F clock high frequency clock because it require a counter DPWM counter then a problem switching frequency clock and then error due to ratio error voltage and then due to ratio comment then it will generate Q H and Q L. So, input is F clock and A problem the input is also sign error voltage and the duty command though it is a 10 bit number, but they are Q format in this case it is Q 1.9, but in this case it is Q 2.8, but their number of bits are same and output is a Q H and Q L and then we are defining register and we are getting a counter and this counter will be a short tooth generator which will be 2.8. So, that means, this counter and this due to ratio Q formats are same because they have to be compared. So, you see always at the rate f clock we are taking the positive of the PWM. If the PWM signal is high, high then Q PWM is 0 and counter 0 else. So, that means, it is the beginning. So, what is this logic? That means, you see this is like this. So, we want to sync this counter. we want to sync this counter is the switching frequency clock. So, this is my F S W and these are the edges of the F clock to increment the counter. So, you see whenever the first edge come it will go inside this block. In fact, this clock edge is also because it is the highest frequency clock. Once it says it is high you see it is high then it will basically reset this counter. So, that is why the counter is reset and that time the Q PWM is also 0. Now, whenever this is goes low then your Q PWM is high because we want to generate a PWM signal and PWM will compare up to the duty ratio value. That means, if we check this is my duty ratio command, this is my if you remember the duty command. So, here this will generate you know this if you go let us say if you hit. So, you will get Q P W M to be high. So, this is my Q P W M ok and this corresponding to our duty ratio D T that we want to define. So, it will go. So, that means, each switching period this will happen due to ratio will be generated. So, the objective of this block is it like a DPWM counter. We are using an external PWM clock otherwise you may not need this block itself can generate PWM whenever the counter is reset. So, here we are as if you are using a clock synchronized counter the counter reset is happening with the switching edge of this FSW clock because we have used a separate clock generator circuit. If that was not I mean if we do not generate FSW from here then we can do by same logic if the counter hit upper limit of the PWM then we will reset. So, these things are possible here we are using an external switching frequency clock because sometime 
the switching frequency clock can be provided from outside. So, this feature is given this PSM logic will work even with your external switching frequency clock. Suppose I want to operate the PWM frequency differently. So, I can sync with clock and whenever this edge come I will simply reset the counter. Again it will reset here, but till that time the next clock come the counter will continue to increase. So, this is what is happening. Okay? And we want 0 to 2 volt during this time. So, accordingly we have to set the resolution Q format. Now, whenever the duty ratio come co common come, so the Q PWM is defined. So, this is your Q PWM and we know that we need Q PWM, Q PWM and Q PSM and this will generate the actual Q. Okay? So, what is next? Now, at every edge of this clock. So, if you go back to the basic operation of this circuit, you know. So, every edge of this clock that means, you know, instead of going. So, let me bring this thing. Yeah. So, here this is our FSW clock and we have discussed that at every FSW clock, if we draw the output voltage waveform, let us say the output voltage waveform like this, so it was going down, then it will go up like this. So, it will check the status of the output voltage with respect to the reference voltage, we are talking about the sample voltage. So, that means, you remember what is NER, that is my error signal and we have discussed if the error is negative, what is any? it is nothing but so it is inside local variable in this case it is NER okay, because this is a inside the block. So, NER eventually is nothing but your ref reference minus N out. So, if N is negative that means your N this implies N out is greater than N ref that means your output voltage is above reference voltage. So, you have to skip the pulse. So, this will result into NER 9th bit to be 1 because it is a 2s complement and that is why if this is 1, this statement will be executed and it will set QPSM to be 0. That means, it will skip the pulse. Else, this will be non, this will be 0 because this will be 1 whenever say inside any logic is activated when it is 1 equal to 1. So, here as if your NER 9 bit as if is equal to 1. So, it will be skip otherwise QPSM a 1 and QPSM we have discussed that this is QPWM and this is QPSM. So, this is Q. If the QPSM is 1, it will simply plus the PWM for the entire cycle because it is this statement will be only executed at the edge of the cycle. So, if it is 1 that means, this Q P S M will be activated for the whole cycle Q P S M and during this cycle it will pass the PWM signal. And if the next cycle it sees the output voltage goes below the reference voltage then NER 9th bit will be 0 and this statement will be executed. So, then it will charge cycle it will enable and if sorry actually I, I I just the statement should be like this. If we found that in this case NER 9 bit equal to 1 which implies your N out is greater than N ref. So, then this will be a skip cycle in that case this will be In this case, what will happen? Your sorry, continue 0. So, then the output voltage waveform will not look like this because as if it was higher and it is coming in. So, this whole cycle voltage will drop. Whenever it crosses this cycle, let us say this is VREF, 
if V ref then this cycle your this will be 0. So, in this case let us say n a r 9 bit equal to 0 then what will happen? So, this was 0 this will go high for the whole cycle it will go high. So, this is my q p s m. So, when the q p s m is 0 q will be 0. So, it is called skip cycle. So, this cycle is called skip cycle and this cycle will be called charge cycle. Okay. So, this method will continue. Once it decided you see q h is nothing but this we are calling q h directly we are giving this because we are using in diode mode. So, there is no dead time is required and the low side switch is simply set to 0. So, this is the experimental result for 6.4 volt we have taken some voltage where V ref because we want to say that V ref we set to 1 volt. So, output voltage should be 1 volt you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is at 1 volt okay. and we have considered load resistance to be 13.5 fixing it. So, at 6.4 volt this is a current ampere. So, that means this is like what is the peak current limit? So, peak current is 500 milliampere. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 almost it is like uh, you know 1, 2, 3, 1 point, 1 point 7 or something. What are the duty ratio we found? It is 1 point, point 0.128 or 0 0.125 whatever. Now, time period we know. So, that means what should be my current ripple? It will be m1 into dt that means d into t. What is m1? It is v in minus v0 by l into dt. Now, what is t by l? So, t is 5 by 1.8. So, 5 by 1.8 is the T by L. Then what is V in minus V0? It is 6.4 minus 1 and that into into this into 0 0.125. So, that means it is coming to be 5 into 5.4 into 0 0.125 divided by 1.8 and you can find out you can calculate it it will be coming close to this current. And interestingly here we if we take the AC coupled ripple the output voltage is lower than this at this edge. So, that it undergoes a charge cycle that is why it is turning on. Now, the next cycle also output voltage is lower. So, two successive charge cycle. So, there are two charge cycles. charge cycle and here it is 20 microsecond and what is our switching frequency is 5 microsecond. So, each will have 4 cycle. So, the skip cycle is 2 cycle here 4 4. So, 10 cycle is skip that means we are getting 10 here we are getting 2 skip 2 charge cycle and 10 skip cycle. Okay again follow like this. So, that means we are getting 2 charge and 2 and 10 skip. Now, what will happen if we decrease increase the input voltage to 7 volt. Now, you see when we increase that means your current has gone up. So, that injected. So, you can see here that means this is a charge balance. So, in two subsequent cycle when there is a charge cycle your inductor current is positive. So, it is injected energy from source to the converter and that is going to the load side. So, the charge balance is happening over two charge cycle and 10 skip cycle. So, effectively 12 cycle switching cycle is your effective time period is a balancing. Now, suddenly you have increased the input voltage since the duty which is fixed. So, naturally current is go up. So, you are giving excess charge, but the load remains same because it is 13.5 ohm and output voltage 1 volt. So, since you are giving excess, so what will happen? There will be again two charge cycle, maybe more number of skip, but they will not balance perfectly. So, it may it will undergo one charge cycle charge cycle. So, that means this phenomena you can see 
they are not happy, happening in a periodic fashion or they are somewhat unpredictable. But if you decrease the input voltage, you will see you will find more number of charge cycle because due to this is fixed, the current got reduced. So, you are actually injecting less energy. As a result, it you will need to inject more number of cycle and then only you can have a skip pulse and then only the charge. So, it is all about charge balance of the capacitor. So, the capacitor load current is fixed, but since the due to ratio is same, if the input voltage is lower, that means the injected charge in the charge cycle will be less. As a result, you need to give more charge cycle to anticipate the discharge period. So, the charge balance, so that is why the number of skip cycle is less. If we make further reduce you see the number of charge cycle is increasing because you know here like after this case two charge cycle there are skip cycle like this. But if you further reduce the, the series of charge cycle is increased and then only the skip cycle will happen this is around 2.7 volt. Now if we make 2 volt then since the due to this is fixed the current has gone down and this is the operation where your in a charge cycle how much energy is injected it is not sufficient to maintain the voltage balancing issue that is why you can see it is coming to be less than 8 volt where we want sorry less, less than 0.8 volt. So, here we are getting we are getting output voltage less than 0.8 volt where 1 volt is the regulation point that means which I discussed that if we decrease the input voltage, if the deuterius is fixed, then your injected energy is not sufficient for this case and you need to either increase the deuterius because that is the only way. So, that you know in one case it was coming like this. If you increase the deuterius what will happen? Then only you can go further and if you increase inject more energy then it may be possible to take this voltage up to this regulation point okay and that is exactly what is happening at 2.44 it is going close to the regulation point but it is the pulse keeping has not yet started so if you slightly increase so we saw around 4.6 or so the pulse keeping just started that means the actual pulse keeping operation should happen in this case is around 2.46 and above below that it will go to the regular PWM operation where since it is the open loop ratio there will be no regulation in the output voltage and which is not desirable. So, that is why we need to adapt this duty ratio if we saw that there is a frequent uh, you know charge cycle and from the error calculation if you find that the error is always down. So, you can put a counter and you can slowly increase the duty ratio using slower loop because it should not interfere with the regular switching frequency then there will be a non-linear phenomenon will happen. So, summary of observation at lower input voltage the number of skip cycle was getting reduced below a threshold value no skip cycle and there is no output voltage regulation and the skip cycles not fixed always that means number of charge and skip cycle it was not always happening periodically and that will lead to non monotonic spectral composition and this was first reported in this paper that how does this non monotonic spectral composition can come and what are the non linear aspect dynamical aspect. Then further actually more techniques were proposed that means this technique actually you can get always a periodic stable behavior by you can also customize the number of fixed cycle. Here, it is a configurable controller where you can have multiple type of light load control with spectral padding also under light load condition. But this technique actually gives you the number of pulse keeping you want it is always possible to define predefine the skip cycle by that way it will allow to optimize the overall efficiency under light load condition. But the, this technique requires the closed loop operation even under light load. So, that can be overcome. So, this gives us some aspect of research for future research. So, in summary we have discussed Vlog HDL implementation of digital pulse keeping modulation. Then we have discussed experimental results we have shown of a buck converter and we have 
discuss some case study and we have summarized some observation. I hope that will be very useful. But if the power level is low, the spectral composition, monotonic spectral composition may not have a significant impact on the EMI, but still it gives us uh, you know opportunity to think explore other light load control technique. And in this course, we will also consider constant on time light load control in the subsequent lecture, which is also very popular. And we will also combine PWM with PSM or PWM with constant on time to get multi mode, where we want to get wide load current operation, where we high load will operate PWM, light load will go for either PSM or constant on time. That is it for today. Thank you very much.